Good morning, one and all present here. I welcome you all to the 98th webinar of the Saturday webinar series by Manage CIA. Uh, the Center for Innovation and Agripreneurship is a center of excellence hosted at the National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management. It's one of the leading agribusiness incubators in the country, and Manage CIA has till date mentored five or three entrepreneurs and incubated more than 310 startups from various focus areas of agriculture and health sector. Uh, the topic for today's session is Lights of Startups, Opportunities and Challenges. We have two speakers joining us today. Our first speaker for the day is uh, Dr. M. Nathu Kumar, Principal Scientist and PI for Agribusiness Incubator at ICAR, uh, National Research Center on NEET. I request Dr. Nathu Kumar to take over the session. Uh, I also request all the attendees to use chat box to address their question to the speakers. These will be taken up during the Q&A round. Over to you, sir. I'll just make you the presenter. So can you hear us? Mr. Mukukumar, can you hear us? What about the other speaker? Uh, the person has joined. I'll just. So, Anil is also here. Uh, start with anyone, no? Okay. Uh, so, there's some issue with Mr. Mukukumar. So, we will move on to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Anil. He's the founder and director at Agrosonic Solutions. Uh, Agrosonic Solutions has developed goat farm livestock management software and Goat Dairy Android app that helps in optimizing the performance of farm and increase productivity. He is also a managed CIA incubator. Over to you, Anil, sir. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful to be back on this stage. And uh, it's very nice uh, for all of you to be present here today. Uh, so can I sh share my screen, please? Yeah, I have made you the presenter. You can share. OK, thank you. So please do let me know once you start uh, seeing the screen. Uh, we can, can see, see your screen. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let me begin. Uh, yeah, so welcome to Agrosonic uh, Solutions Private Limited. Uh, we are based in Pune, and uh, I'm Anil Tati. I'm the founder director of this company. Uh, the basic project idea that we cultivated over a period of time was to develop and strengthen a sustainable value chain for livestock, goat, and sheep farmers and ensure that they get a secondary source of income. So why animal husbandry? What is our vision? So I would like to talk to you about this. So most of the farmers come from a very rural background. We say India has got 70 to 80% of people coming from agriculture, but unfortunately technology doesn't reach the grassroots level. They are unaware of what technology is all about. Apart, most of them do have a smartphone, but technology wise, they are quite, uh, they do not have technology with them. So we would like to assist them with technology because without technology, they will not be able to progress. Then agricultural income is more based on, uh, based on uh, various uh, parameters like uh, rain, weather, government policies, etc. So market policies, etc. So their livelihood is quite affected by these changes. So we would like to ensure that they get a secondary source of income or livelihood. So how do do that? So for that, we would like to concentrate on the animal husbandry sector. That is our vision. Uh, me and my wife, we are the co-founders of this. We have been incubated by AIC Pinnacle. On our advisory board, we have two retired joint commissioners of Maharashtra state and Karnataka state. And uh, Dr. Mahesh Bansode and Dr. Biskur, they have both served in the animal husbandry department. They provide us with the domain expertise, et cetera. Uh, we have been very fortunate uh, to be a part of uh, Rashtriya Kisan Vikas Yojana Manage program, uh, cohort six. We have been also been selected as one of the 17 startups under the Atal Innovation Mission, uh, United Nations Capital Development Fund, Fussell College Center of Excellence, uh, AIC MIT has uh, offered us fund for under a CCD for 25 lakhs. Uh, Chunoti 3.0, we have been awarded 25 lakhs uh, 
as a CCPS fund. We have been selected as one of the 75 best agri startups from by the Honorable Prime Minister. So, and it was all thanks to all these people who have mentored us. Right from day one, we had an excellent uh, training sessions, etc., which opened a lot of opportunities and a uh, lot of um, uh, ideas were cleared under these particular in, 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 initiatives by different co companies. Uh, so why goat farming? So first of all, many people won't know that India is the second largest livestock population. It has got the second largest livestock population. We have roughly around 135 million goat population with 20 million goat farmers. And livestock accounts, goats account for 25% of our livestock. Uh, we have got a huge amount of goat population in the dry areas like Bihar, Rajasthan, UP, even now Kerala, Tamil Nadu have got a huge population. We are also one of the major exporters of goat meat. And uh, since the beef man, goat meat has gained more commercial uh, uh, exposure. And uh, why goat farming? Again, goat is a very low maintenance animal. It can thrive on whatever food is left off. Like you have jawar, bajra, etc. You cut off the corn and whatever is left off, it can uh, grow on that. And the breeding cycle for goats is roughly around 145 to 150 days. So practically in two years time, you can triple your basic count. Also, the byproducts from goat farming like milk, manure, uh, then the skin, all these things add income to the uh, farmer. So that you know gives him a very uh, nice way of, it's like a poor man's cow. That is why it's called as a poor man's cow. And apart from it, if you look at the urbanization in India, wherein the incomes have increased, diet patterns have changed, people would want to go in for animal, uh, protein, there is a huge population goat. So all these things account for, you know, that goat farming has come into um, much prominence and people would want to uh, get into goat farming. That is one of the main reasons. But unfortunately, there are a lot of problems in goat farming. There is a lot of challenges that farmers face. First of all, this sector is completely unorganized. It lacks ex expertise. There is very pure, poor nutrition and the growth is stunted. High mortality is there. I have seen around 40, 50 animals die in a single winter season or when floods are there, etc. So very high mortality, inadequate veterinary care. Farmers do not know where to go for treatment. Low quality of breeding stock is there. So roughly if you say that 125 to 150 grams of fattening should happen every day, but uh, at the end, it it's just around 25 to 30 grams weight that is increased. So that is a huge problem for farmers. Improper herd management. Then do not know how to keep the herds. Initially, goat farming was a nomadic kind of an activity, but now with stall fed and uh, uh, half, uh, half stall fed, like you know, some part of it you graze and some part of it you keep in stalls, it has gained a lot of expertise. And then sadly, there has been no record keeping. For example, if you go to a doctor, doctor sees your case paper and he can prescribe you medicines, he can prescribe you treatments, etc. But animals, unfortunately, do not have any digital record. So digital record keeping is very essential because without, without looking at the medical history, without looking at what treatment has been given, you cannot predict or you cannot uh, treat a particular animal. So record keeping is very essential in uh, this particular activity. So record keeping has to be there. Uh, so what we have done, we have come out with a solution as a software solution, which is called as goat mate livestock management solution, which gives the farmer complete a reminder list what what he needs to do every day. For example, what vaccinations have to be taken, when the weight has to be measured, which female is ready for breeding, what is the breeding uh, history, uh, which male and female have to be bred together, how many births, deaths have happened, how many uh, purchases have happened, how many sales have happened, all these things are there. How much fodder has to be given? Fodder again has to be calculated on a uh, per animal weight basis. So uh, how much uh, fodder has to be given, how much of dry, how much of green, how much of concentrated uh, food stuff has to be given, when has the vaccination to be given, according to seasons, according to age, according to breed, different vaccinations have to be given. 
uh, how much is milk is been produced how much of order is been produced on the farm uh, how do you keep track of your accounts how much food food has to be stored in the farm to suffice to uh, suffice uh, uh, periods where fodder might not be available in the market or in your farm so with this you know you are easily able to analyze you can track different metrics and you know you can take corrective action which will help the farmer you know come to an understanding yes this is how i need to manage my farm and this gives him a better idea this entire software is available in six different languages english hindi marathi kannada tamil telugu uh, etc and we can customize it to accord different uh, languages also uh, to support this we also have a mobile device called as a goat diary which is uh, which is also available on the play store etc and not all facilities are available as the goat mate software but it will help the smaller farmer manage his business uh, very easily apart from this we also have accessories to support the farmer like weighing machines are there wherein an rs232 interface can be connected to a computer and a barcode tag is uh, tagged onto animal which can identify this animal so once you scan this animal the entire goat history is available to you how many births have happened how much has the weight gain be how many births have happened uh, what all uh, expenses have occurred on this goat so in short you can have a per goat per animal analysis of how much of uh, expense has occurred and what is the current weight etc because weight will directly measure into your profitability or the selling cost here we have purposefully avoided rfid tags in india because rfid tags we found are much more costlier and barcode tags uh, uh, manufacturing etc becomes much more cheaper and interfacing uh, becomes much more cheaper here uh, we did a case study in farm field bihar this is a farm in gachpara bihar wherein we try to monitor the monitors uh, the statistics the owner mr anis rehmani had 136 livestock uh, and he has been into this family business and what we found was Uh, with manual record keeping uh, uh, the mortality was roughly around 40% which has come down to 8% the weight gain has increased to 100 125 grams not good enough but much better than what used to used to be previously the birth have increased in fact one of their breeds black bengal started giving birth to 3 to 4 animals in one in one pregnancy so that uh, is a surplus amount of cash available with the farmer that is profitability directly fitness has reduced profit margins have increased so uh, with this kind of a scenario it makes sense to use technology for uh, livestock management uh, this this is the traction we have uh, got till now we have around 28000 livestock under uh, in our software which we monitor and we are constantly adding value to the system we are developing artificial intelligence to predict uh, how many animals will be available for next breed next bakreed or next uh, market uh, sale etc what are the logistics required etc so all these artificial intelligence techniques we are implementing in our software uh, we have clients in india as well as abroad like ethiopia kenya sri lanka usa zimbabwe south africa and in india also lot many uh, clients we have acquired and we hope to acquire at least 60000 livestock uh, by this year end and to support this what we have proposed is a livestock bazaar which will be in operation from 1st of october 2022 wherein everything will be available under one roof so from farm to fork that means you can have fodder companies drug companies meat exporters you want credit you want finance you want to sell your wool fabric everything you will be able to do on this particular platform so it will be something like an amazon of livestock and it will provide the farmer a complete uh market uh, linkage uh, to the farmer so anything that needs to be done will be available on this uh, recently uh, this is mr sanjeev balyan ji who is the center minister for animal husbandry he inaugurated our software for uttarakhand state government uh, rishikesh and in fact he suggested us to you know take care of the other cattle apart from goats and sheep also into uh, like cows buffaloes pigs fishes etc and so that process has already started uh, what we propose to do is we intend to tie up with different government agencies and along with 
different schemes like National Livestock Mission, Mahamish Yojana, Mahavim, then Rashtriya Kisan Vikas Yojana and reach out to beneficiaries and make this a part of government uh, policy itself so that the software can be available to all the beneficiaries who have been awarded these particular benefits from government. Right now, uh, our business model works on subscription, fee-based advertisement, everything. Uh, so we charge around 100 rupees per goat per year. But uh, because of uh, a lot of value addition, we'll be increasing it to 500 rupees per animal from 1st of October. And we also have an experienced panel of veterinaries and farmers on our panel. So if you need animal care to be taken off, you can call our veterinary doctors. They can do a video conferencing and help you out with uh, I, I, your problem. Uh, not much of competition as such in this area because whatever softwares are available, they're not suitable for rural population and not specifically for goat farming or record keeping. Softwares are available for buying and selling, but uh, not specifically for building up of digital records. Uh, these are our, our B2G clients. That is Punya Shloka, Hilya Devi, Mendi, Shri Vikas, Mahamandal, Maharashtra, and uh, Uttarakhand uh, uh, state government. These are our B2G clients at present. Apart from that, uh, we have many uh, B2C clients uh, situated in India and abroad, as I mentioned. Then what are the advantages for the farmer? As I, as I told you, mortality, morbidity, etc., has decreased uh, tremendously. Uh, he has been able to use his resources very nicely, easy access to vet. We are trying to provide complete market linkages, better return on investment. For the government also, it has become an easy tool for monitoring where the benefit has gone, how it has been utilized, uh, whether the actual farmer has been getting benefited from it, uh, where funds would be required more, who has not benefited till now. We are also trying to come out with a patent and for a unified goat score, like you have your Aadhaar number, we are trying to build a record for a goat which will also tell us that this goat has got a score of 8.6 out of 10. So it or the meat purity, the meat purity is 8 and, or the meat purity is 7.5 out of 10. So this is a score that we are trying to build and slowly we should be able to launch that. And moreover for government, this particular activity will help in rural livelihood, increase in rural livelihood and age exports yeah. sorry i think uh yeah the presentation is no longer visible yeah. yeah yeah so these are some of the pictures these, these are merino sheep uh, this is in uttarakhand uh, uh, so these uh, animals have been distributed to farmers so i believe we cannot see your presentation uh, just a minute yeah okay. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can, we can. Yeah, so this is Merino wool or Merino sheep. And they are up in the Himalayas and only during the winter season they are got below. Otherwise they are bred in the cold season. And the wool uh, roughly uh, fetches around uh, uh, 700 rupees per kg, et cetera, around 40 to 50 uh, kgs of wool is removed every year, every and also season. Yeah, I have two minutes only, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please, uh, so, breeding and genealogy yeah. keeps track of it. This is artificial insemination being done, uh, which keeps a track of the genealogy, vaccinations being done, wool being shared. We also assist farmers in uh, constructing sheds, uh, uh, selecting breeds. Uh, these are different applications that we have developed for different governments, Mahamesh app, Shri Mitra app, which helps the goat farmer in their various activities, online beneficiaries, etc. Uh, yeah. So apart from this, there are many other opportunities in livestock. People should look at National Livestock Mission. There are ample opportunities for entrepreneurship. There are a lot of opportunities in fisheries, poultry, piggery, live tracking of animals, sericulture, that is worm, silk worms, etc. Animal disease surveillance, veterinary services, meat purity. A lot of opportunities exist and people should definitely try out these particular ideas. Uh, I think I'm done with my presentation. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much. We'll now move on to our next speaker, Dr. Mutu Kumar. So I'll make you the presenter. Dr. Mutu Kumar, can you hear us? 
Just a minute. All right. Yeah, sure. I made you the presenter. So can you come again? We can't show you properly. Sir, can you hear us? So uh, till the technical, uh, I think uh, you need to restart. Meanwhile, I'll take a couple of questions, Jeanath. So, okay. Sir, uh, Anil, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll take a couple of questions we have received uh, till we uh, resolve that uh, other issue, sir. So, uh, as a startup, uh, so what are the major challenges you faced uh, when you go to the goat farmer, sir? Because so now there are multiple uh, small and marginal farmers with a uh, less number of uh, uh, size size of group. Yeah. So, so what kind so, of uh, solutions you are offering to them? Is it affordable or not? The cash. Yeah. So can you please the, talk about that, sir? Yeah. First of all, you know our uh, entire agriculture industry has uh, come out uh, with you know a belief that everything should be offered to them free of cost. So that is the first hindrance that any uh, company trying to sell something to agriculture comes in. You know, they want everything free or under a subsidy. That is the first and foremost challenge. Secondly, they are not very willing to accept technology because they say we have been doing this activity since our uh, older generations and we would not like to do something new. But uh, in, in those cases, what we do is we show them case studies. We, Ask them to talk to different farmers who have already started using this technology, and we even offer them, you know, a, a subsidized rate for one year that you use it for one year. If you don't feel happy, you do not renew it, and uh, based on that, we try to acquire clients. And for us, we are only charging hundred rupees per goat per animal. So when when the animal costs around fifteen thousand to twenty thousand when it is born. And 100 rupees is what they need to spend. The percentage, if you look at it, is not much. The same amount they could have spent on their WhatsApp or you know on their data or uh, 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 breakfast, etc. But with that, they are able to maintain this livestock. They are able to see that uh, this is correct, correctly done. To give you a very simple example, if you run our software for one month and uh, the weight should normally increase by 3 kgs. So 3 kgs into 250 rupees is the minimum rate of meat. So that will itself will earn them 750 rupees per animal per month. So we show them these economics and then they get convinced and then they are able to look into this technology. So people, then another disadvantage is some people are not very aware of uh, how to use mobiles, etc. So we have online training sessions, we have support staff, we go to their places, we train the farmer how to use them. We have our own mobile handsets, which we give to the people say that you use this if you don't want, uh, if you don't like it, you can return it back to us. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So one more question is about, uh, so in the long run, typically what happens most of the uh, software related thing, so it's not easy to commercialize. So the players in the market is focusing on connecting market linkages, yes. which are extremely important for goat farmers. Yes. Are you providing any of such kind of solutions where you are involved in at this point of time, sir? Yeah, so the livestock bazaar will take care of this. Apart from that, we are also trying to talk to market ex uh, meat exporters. For example, I can uh, take a name of Licious. So where are they going to get raw material from? So they don't have to look at anywhere else. They just have to log in through our software whatever meat is required, they'll find the raw material right there. And not only that, they will be able to manage the fodder, they'll be able to manage the quantity, they'll be able to manage the fattening, all these things. So it will be uh, definitely an end-to-end solution for, uh, coming soon from us for all the good farmers. Uh, in fact, we uh, we also quoted for a World Bank project in Ethiopia, wherein 50,000 farmers are going to be given this app and uh, the meat exporting company is going to finance all this and 
keep a record of uh, everything and collect uh, the raw material from them. Thank you, sir. Uh, are you uh, I mean, trying to expand it to other uh, animals also, sir, apart from goat at this point of time? Yeah, so we, uh, since we were uh, talking with Uttaranchal government, we already started with rabbits and now we have started, we have started looking at cows, buffaloes and uh, large animals also. We have started keeping records for that also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll get back to you soon, sir, with uh, more questions. Yes, Thank you for right. answering yes. these questions. Sir. Uh, please be there. Uh, Muthu Kumar, sir, can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah. Are you yes, able to hear me? Now all good, sir. Kindly, you can start, sir. Yeah. So very good morning to all. Uh, a very warm greetings from NRC on meat. Uh, this is the only institute exclusively working on uh, meat, meat sector. So at the outset, I thank uh, Dr. Saronan, sir, and his uh, team from Manage for giving this opportunity. So as you know, this livestock is immensely contributing to the uh, economy of the country. It also provides employment to the rural populations. In addition to that one, it also ensures the nutritional security of the country through its the nutritious foods like uh, milk, milk, egg, and meat product. I cannot see the presentation, Jeanette. Can you see it? Uh, no, we cannot. So would you like it okay. to present from our end? Yeah, that will be fine. I'll do so. In a moment, we'll share, sir. You can continue. I hope it's visible now. Yeah, fine. Good to go. Yes, sir. Kindly continue, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I also uh, congratulate Mr. Anil from Agrosonics uh, for addressing the uh, flagging the issues in the livestock sector, especially the small ruminant sector. So my suggestion to him is uh, instead of only goat, you have also including the sheep in your project, so you can add uh, sheep and goat or small ruminant. Yes, sir. Sheep, sir. Uh, sheep is a part of our. Uh... Yeah, but in your name, it is the only goat you have mentioned. That's why so you can add a sheep or you can put it as a small ruminant. That's okay. my small yeah. suggestion. Yeah, thank you, sir. I will do that. Yeah, right. Uh, so, so in my presentation, I'm going to cover about a little bit about the meat sector, how it's going to, uh, how it's contributing to the economy of the country and also uh, different issues in the lifestyle sector, particularly concerned with the meat value chain. Then what are the opportunities available for the entrepreneurs? Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, you all know that India is bestowed with huge livestock populations. You name it buffalo. We are number one in the world and the cattle and goat population. We are nine, uh, second. And also in, in terms of meat production, so we are having about 8.8 .8 million metric ton of meat. So out of which uh, yeah, 50 percentage comes from the chicken. So like about 40, 4, 4 million metric ton is contributed by the chicken and the remaining uh, 40, 50 percentage is contributed by the other animals. So the, when you look into the meat production sector, so it's growing at an annual growth rate of about 5% over the years. Next one, please. Yeah. So the total lifestyle sector contributes about 12 lakh crores to the Indian economy, out of which about 55% uh, is, 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 is about 5% of the overall Indian GDP. And in the livestock sector, the meat sector alone contributes about 24% of the total uh, contribution from the livestock sector. So you can see the uh, the graphic representation where the agricultural GDP is going down uh, over the years, whereas the livestock sector contribution into the national GDP is growing over the years. So that shows the, prom uh, the promising of the livestock sector. Next one, please. So you can see uh, the India over the years, it become uh, one of the uh, leading meat exporters. So meat means we are exporting the buffalo meat over 80 countries around the globe. So currently we are exporting about 1.5 million metric ton of buffalo meat through which we are able to earn about 25,000 crores. So most of the meat goes to the South Asian countries and Gulf countries and some part, go, major part goes to Vietnam. Next one. So you know that though the livestock sector is immensely contributing to the economy, employment, also nutrition security, 
But overall, if you look into the picture of the animals in animal husbandry sector, it is totally unorganized, or mostly you can say un unorganized. Starting from the animal production till it is mar getting marketed as a produce at the consumer level, there are many, many issues and uh, several challenges are there. So to name it, so the low productivity of animals. So uh, most of the our animals, uh, the growth rate is very less, so that the carcass rates are less and the meat production potential of those animals are very less when compared to the Western countries. And also we don't, have, being the animals are managed by a mass of the people at less number of animals, so they don't have the traceability. Mr. Anil also uh, very clearly told about the importance of uh, traceability and why the animal identification is important. So we, when we come to the meat sector, the, the meat animal marketing as well as the meat production, so we are lacking very behind in most of the basic needs. And also the conversion of the meat into value-added product also very less. And uh, the byproduct, when the animal is slaughtered, only one third is meat and the remaining part, two thirds is byproduct and waste. So those products should be properly utilized for economy as well as the ecological reasons. Next one, please. So when looking into the uh, issues, though the entrepreneur can take those uh, issues or, uh, as an uh, uh, issues as an opportunity and they can convert it into an entrepreneurship uh, potential in the sector. So first one is the improving the animal productivity. So this can be done through breeding, nutritional intervention, also the farming system management, what Ms. Rani was proposing. And also we, we have to have an animal identification system to make the food safety system in place. And we have to have a better infrastructure for uh, animal marketing, including the animal markets, as well as the slaughterhouses. And we should need, uh, pro we have to increase the proportion of the uh, uh, meat pro processing, converting the raw meat into value-added product. And also we have to have a lot of, we have a lot of potential to convert the waste and byproduct into value, very value-added meat product, thereby we can fetch a more return from the animal processing. Next one. So this is the first one is the uh, improving the production potential of the animal. You know the, uh, the history of broiler. So which, uh, when the broiler was introduced in this country in the way back 1980s, so they were weighing about 1.5 kilo uh, within an age of eight weeks. But currently our uh, broiler birds could able to get a body weight of 1.5 to 2 kg within a, a period of 35 to 40 days. So this all happened because of the improvement in the genetic potential nutritional management and also health care as well as the farming system management. So this is very clearly tells that how the integrated uh, poultry industry has able to make a, a tent in the animal production system and now the poultry occupies more than 50 percent of the total milk production in this country. So this has to be replicated in the other sector also. Next one please. So when we look into the, uh, the small ruminant, especially sheep and goat, so their body weight is very low. So this is because of indiscriminate breeding and poor nutritional care. So this has to be addressed. And if the uh, sheep and goat sector can follow the, uh, the, the path of the broiler sector, so definitely we can improve the meat productivity from these animals. Next one, please. So this is what, so we have to have a superior gem blossom to improve the production potential of the, these animals. So a yeah, person who has a good knowledge about the animal breeding and genetics, so they can establish the breeder farm, which can supply superior germ plasm to the farmers to grow. So this has happened, uh, the, if this happens, then the productivity of this animal can be enhanced to a very great extent. So this will, this can happen even in the small ruminant as well as the pig and other animals. Next one, please. So those who cannot have the uh, good uh, knowledge about the animal breeding and also they can just buy the uh, the, the high germplasm piglets or the kids from the uh, farms which were producing the German uh, superior germplasm animal and they can grow it. So we have an entrepreneur uh, from Mahupnagar. So he uh, uh, give, distributes the piglets to the farmers to grow them to the marketable age. So after the fattening period and attaining the market weight, so these animals were collected and he has a good network of marketing. So he collects the animal, uh, the pigs from the, grown pigs from the farmer and they even he uh, sent to the northeastern part of the country also. So he has his own uh, transport vehicle and also he used a rail wagon to transport this uh, grown live pigs to the various part of the country. So this is one of the opportunity available for the entrepreneurs to grow uh, this animal to the market weight and sell it to the market. 
next one so you all know that the the country chicken which fetches the about the three two to three times higher price than the broiler chicken because of its unique taste and the texture so we have an incubator at nrc on meat dr kotaya he is a basically a veterinarian come breeder so he has evolved a, a breed uh, crossing the broiler chicken as well as uh, country chicken and he has come up with a, a bird called in grow color broiler so which is a slow grow grown broiler which has a uniqueness uh, like that of the country chicken at the same time it has a growth potential of the broiler chicken so he uses our uh, the uh, processing facility at nrc meat he produces meat and sells to a unique market so he priced his product in between the broiler as well as the country chicken so this is has a very good market currently at hyderabad next to so the current consumers not only bother about the nutritional and taste profile of the meat but also they are very much bothered about the presence of uh, injurious chemical in the meat and meat product so we have uh, evolved uh, uh, the the established the uh, protocol for organic meat production on line with the apida npop program so we have established a, a organic farm uh, for sheep and this protocol can be formed uh, followed by any farmer to produce the uh, organic meat so this can be very well possible uh, in the country and this uh, the organic meat fetches higher prices when compared to the normal meat thank you next one so in addition to the nutritional profile as well as the, the chemical safety of the meat the consumers also bother about how the animals are grown in the farm and how animals are treated whether the animals are allowed to express their natural uh, behaviors so the consumers are also uh, taking care of the animal welfare issue so the yeah, yeah, entrepreneurship can can be uh, developed over this issue so they can grow the uh, birds and animals in the natural environment under the uh, organic farming system and this product which were uh, prepared from the uh, free range animals so will fetch us also a good price premium price in the market so this is an another entrepreneurship opportunity available in the livestock sector next one so we have one incubator at nrc on meat so near hyderabad so he has a, a similar farm where the he grows the uh, goat as well as the uh, chicken in the free range system and, and, and animals are very maintained at very healthy condition and he market to the nearby area at a higher price, premium price this product next to and you all know that uh, about 70 percentage of the uh, feed uh, animal production cost goes to the feed production so the the the, the feed availability of feed is very uh, very scarce care and so we have to develop uh, some alternate method to uh, make the uh, animal farming economically viable so we can uh, utilize, you can prepare the total mixture ration from the uh, crop residues available in the nearby field and they can be converted into a nutritious total mixture ration. So that will have a, uh, that will impart a good growth rate to the animals. And also we can go for the silage like uh, feed material that will be of very use when the feed scarcity is uh, in, in, uh, during the summer months. So this is a one more opportunity available for the entrepreneurship uh, uh, in the livestock sector. Next one. So then the second part of the animal production is the animal identification and the traceability. So as the animal uh, farmers maintain very few animals and uh, uh, so the identification is a big issue here. But uh, the NDDP has developed a, a, a traceability system for the dry dairy animal. So and uh, the APIDA maintains the, uh, uh, the traceability system from the slaughterhouse. But in our summit, we have developed a, a database for the traceability issue where we are con connecting the uh, pre-harvest as well as the post-harvest uh, aspect of the traceability. And now we can go for the holistic traceability system. So wherein we can identify the meat where from the where from originated. And we have the uh, some of the entrepreneurs and the incubators. So they have developed a unique model for uh, traceability system like GOMO. It is a, a, a artificial intelligence based system. So wherein uh, the muscle of the animal, that is the face of the animal can be used as a unique feature and that can be used to identify the animal and we are also working with the chain flux from bangalore uh, to develop the blockchain based traceability system for the livestock sector next one please and the third part is the animal marketing so this is the main area where the animal undergoes lot of stress and that will lead to uh, the uh, health issues and also uh, a lot of uh, loss due to the post harvest uh, loss uh, because of the injury to the animal so you can develop certain uh easily available um, tools like uh, the weighing machines 
and also the uh, app based uh, uh, some app which can uh, self, self cell phone based app which can able to uh, measure the animal body weight so through a single pick so these are some of the uh, options are available to reduce the uh, animal stress and also the online marketing of animal is uh, upcoming so this will definitely reduce the lot of burden of the burden on the uh, farmer as well as the uh, animal producer as well as the animal marketer to get the animals of his desired uh, next one six so then come to the retailing so the post covid we have seen a very revolutionary change in the the way meat is marketed so meat is uh, they are uh, these online marketers are uh, very hygienically processing the meat and also packing it nicely and the, they are putting into the cold chain and supplying to the uh, hygienic meat at the doorstep of the consumers so there is a great importance is coming up in this area also next one so then uh, the processed meat sector so the, you can also an uh, entrepreneur can also establish a facility wherein he can convert the raw meat into various value added meat product and we can sell it to the uh, largest houses where they are market this product next one so then the equipment so this is also an another opportunity for the entrepreneur so because they can uh, develop a lot of machineries which is used for uh, the processing the meat uh, uh, slaughtering the animal as well as the processing them into various value added meat product next one so then the further processing you see in india only 20 percentage of the meat undergoes processing but there are a lot of benefit uh, by converting the raw meat into value added meat product because it assures uh, assured benefit to the farmer as well as the processor it gives a lot of variety of product to the consumers and it enhances the marketability of the product and also it generates a lot of employment to the consumer next so these are the, some of the pre harvest technology where we can uh, value add the meat product by enriching the, with the some of the nutrient like omega 3 fatty acids dha and other things also very good next one. So these are the United India is known for its value added product of traditional value added meat product. So these traditional meat products are even now they are restricted to a particular region, but we can use this technology like retard processing, vacuum packaging and super chilling. So this can enhance their self life so that they can be marketed out of the region also. Next. Time. So this is there is a great opportunity for value added meat product because a lot of quick service restaurants are coming up. The eating outside eating is in has increased over the period of time. So there are a lot of opportunity for converting meat into value added meat product. Next one. So there are there is also a, there is a great demand for the pre pre mix and spice mixes which can uh, make the uh, uh, the processing of meat into value added product very easy. So just take this pre pre mix and mix it with the meat and they can convert it into various value added meat product. There is a huge market for this kind of product. Next one. And the packaging is very important to extend the self life, also preserve the meat product. So there are a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurship opportunities are available in the packaging side also. So an entrepreneur can take up this uh, packaging as one of the options, entrepreneurial thing to uh, to get into the uh, meat processing sector. Next to so then the the value added byproduct, the product, uh, the byproducts coming from the uh, slaughter animal can be converted into meat cum bone meal, various pet treat and even the high value biodiesels and even the pet products can be made from this byproduct of coming from the slaughtering of the animal next so even the waste they can be converted into various value added product like bio briquettes so this have a lot of fuel energy that can be used for replacing the as a source of energy for uh, running the broiler in the industry sector next to so even uh, there there are a lot of opportunity available to treat this uh, the waste coming out of slaughterhouses so there is a lot of opportunities that an entrepreneur can come up with a novel uh, way of disposing this waste into the environment thereby you can safeguard the environment of the meat processing plant next one so there are uh, there are a lot of dystopic technology like artificial intelligence based internet of things blockchain based technologies are available currently the uh, the plant based uh, meat alternatives there are a huge market and also we are also working on the cell cultured meat, the lab grown meat. So that is also coming up. So a lot of uh, internet based things are available to enhance the meat quality as well as the uh, producer safe meat so, in this country. Yeah, I can uh, conclude. So yeah, sorry to what... interrupt. Yeah, I request you to conclude because yeah, of the time. Yeah, you, can, yeah, you can go to the last slide. Okay. 
So these are some of the activities of the NRC on meat and in promoting the entrepreneurship. Yeah, you can go ahead. Go ahead. This is some of the uh, consultancy project given for the entrepreneurs. Next one. Yeah, please go. Ahead. Yeah, so there is a there are a lot of opportunities starting from the meat animal production, uh, the slaughter as well as the byproduct utilization, even the waste utilization. So there are a lot of opportunities. The technologies are available, so the the entrepreneur can take up some of this technology and make their enterprises. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Covering very important information related to uh, meat and livestock based opportunities. So I think in the last few months, sir, uh, I think there is a very uh, increase in a lab based or a plant based meat. So there are question on how do you see it as a market? The what kind of a, a competition you face from that? So can you please address that? It is meant for both the speakers. Uh, both can address this, sir, please. Yeah. Actually, the novelty is the key here. So, customer always uh, want a new new kind of product. So, th that is always there. So, those who don't want to uh, eat a meat, but they want a, 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 a supplement uh, or a, a substitute for the uh, meat, so they can think of this plant-based product. So, wherein uh, a lot of plant materials, like especially the soya-based and other products are uh, uh, made into a product mimicking like a meat. But the main issue is the uh, the texture and the taste taste attributes of the uh, this uh, plant based product. So because you cannot uh, able to mimic the uh, the naturally grown meat uh, compared to the, the the lab grown meat. So you can uh, you there are people are trying to uh, match the texture especially. So but this is a very difficult uh, task. So we are also uh, carrying out the research on this uh, this aspect. So it's in progress. We have to it will be take some more time to come up with the final product. Thank you, sir. Anil, sir. Uh, I think uh, see new technologies and new ways of uh, food will always keep on coming. Uh, initially, some years back, we never had heard about vegan or uh, 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 no gluten, etc. So animal protein has come. Uh, uh, so any uh, feed-based uh, protein, etc., which is going to have its own market. But that does not diminish any of the market that the existing meat market would have. So I, I think new markets will come because the population is growing. Uh, population has got extra income with them. They would like to try healthier food uh, for this, but the existing market will not uh, reduce. This is my gut feeling on this. Thank you, sir. So one more thing related to the permission. This is being a uh meat related or livestock related opportunity, uh, what kind of a permission the startups would require when they want to start? And uh, second thing, uh, is there any kind of support you are providing for the startups in terms of regulatory uh, things, sir? Uh, Muthu Kumar, sir, please, sir. Yeah, uh, any, anyone who deals with the meat, um, uh, meat or any food, they have to take the uh, certification from the FSSCI. And, uh, and also they have to go for the pollution control board certifications. These two things are very important. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, one more question was there, which is related to uh, 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 rearing support. I do, are you conducting any physical training programs now for uh, goat or uh, meat related ones sir, for the startups at your uh, center now? Yeah, we, we have a five days uh, training program on uh, meat processing and further value addition. So it's a paid training program for five days. So normally once in uh, two to three months, we organize this training program. Kindly share the details along with uh, where we'll collect sir, so that we can circulate among because multiple participants were asking about it. Uh, so yeah, that sure. they, they'll be they'll be able to make use of it, sir. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so uh, I would before we move to the next question, I would request any of the participants who would like to interact, you can raise your hand so that we can uh, unmute you. So what about the, will the pet food kind of a thing will come under your purview? If at all it is there, what kind of outlook you have for it, sir? So we, we have the rendering plan. So rendering plan, whatever the uh, uh, byproduct comes out of the slaughtering. So that will be rendering and convert it into meat come bone meal. And also we have the uh, pet pro pet food processing unit also. So we use this uh, meat come bone meal as one of the ingredients to prepare the pet foods. 
that's great sir i think uh, so it will be a very good that's what uh, the, our aim is nothing goes to waste we have to convert whatever the possible uh, way we can convert all the by product comes out of the animal into a saleable usable product great sir the question for anil sir uh, sir is there any uh, return on investment or uh, cost benefit analysis we are providing to a uh, farmer when he pitching this application sir yes we do have in fact we have a lot of uh, help material available before he can make a decision on that so you can gladly share my numbers and email with us my office staff will be able to assist them with all the required information as to the project finance required what are the project economics uh, how much uh, what are the uh, places wherein they can get the materials from etc we have a comprehensive list on that we'll be happy to share that okay thank you sir uh, i think uh, there are uh, some people already there we'll start with uh, dr neeraj gupta okay. yeah uh, good morning this this question is to mr anil uh, mr anil uh, what i'm finding is like uh, the goat milk demand is coming from the you know uh, the consumer especially in case of uh, a clinical cases when recommended by doctor to increase the platelets of in, in case of you know that fiber fever typhoid and all yeah but the availability is quite low so are you planning for some sack sorted semen in goat also likewise in cattle and buffalo yes as we... as, you have, as you have shown in your uh, slide no that you are going with the artificial insemination practices so right. because most of the time like goat is you know going for that slaughter and those eat eat activities and in you know that buck buck type of thing but yeah. female goat is yeah, you know matlab because i am dealing with goats directly in the rural area so i am finding difficult even i can't get 10 liters in a village yes see and right now whatever breeds we have and whatever uh, goat milk is being produced uh, most of it since it's very nutritious and since it's uh, it has got a very high health value uh, most of the farm managers are using it in the farm to raise their kids only that is the first they would not uh, because trying to buy something uh, some nutrient from outside uh, when you have home grown food available is uh, not recommended so whatever um, milk is been produced nearly 50 to 60% is been consumed by the farm at the farm level itself then the second part is that the market that is there for the milk uh, is not in the rural area it is more towards the urban areas for example in pune Uh, people come from different villages and they sell their milk at roughly around 125 rupees to 150 rupees liter and that gets sold off within a one, within one hour of them coming out here but still the quantity that is required visa vis the quantity that is produced by cows buffaloes etc is very very less and you know it's still not up to a very marketable level so maybe we still have to wait for some time for this market to develop and to start coming into the commercial uh, mainstream as yet thank you sir we'll go to the next one uh, girish patel vishesh girish patel can you hear us vendo we'll go to vendo if you cannot hear him jina Yes, Hello. Window, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for for the two presentations. Just a quick one. The startups in livestock would be uh, focusing more on domestic uh, market. Uh, they may not compete favorably on the international market. I wanted to learn from. both of the presenters uh the uh domestic livestock market versus the exports how do they foresee it its growth in the foreseeable future so that the startups can can plan uh, uh accordingly in general what's what's the percentage of the domestic versus uh the international market in terms of livestock thank you thank you window uh, the request to 
go to speaker's my address uh, sir muthu kumar sir please so this price competitiveness is the major issue here so in uh, the, the major uh, livestock product exported from india is the buffalo meat so in the buffalo meat we are price competitive because spent buffaloes are utilized for meat production after the, after the end of the milk production potential so we are getting about 3 to 4 us dollar per kg meat of buffalo meat so this is a very, very price competitive when compared to the brazilian or australian beef where these these those meats are sold at 6 or 7 dollars per kg so that's why uh, the the buffalo meat is price competitive and the requirement of the buffalo meat for domestic consumption is very very less but in case of sheep and goat as well as the poultry so the, the price competitiveness is uh, we are very much lacking because the domestic market price of uh, the sheep and goat meat is around 12 us dollar it is a uh, more or less is equal to the uh, uh, western or the export market price of the other countries so and even the poultry meat also is not cost effective so the demand for uh, sheep and goat in the domestic market is very huge and the price uh, the competitiveness is not that much so that's why we are not able to export um, much of the sheep and goat meat and even the poultry meat to the other countries so the promising is only the buffalo meat sector uh, <coughs> here one more opportunity is there we are uh, if we are able to use the male buffalo calves uh, yes, convert them grow them into a larger body weight of about 200 to 300 kg so definitely we can uh, yeah, very uh, Uh, your quality uh, buffalo meat or veal meat so that can fetch a more price uh, in the industrial, industrial international market so the promising is the uh, male buffalo calf rearing for uh, meat export thank you very much sir anil sir you are to take please uh, yeah so if you look at the goat and meat uh, consumption in uh, india especially uh, there is a huge demand and the supply is quite less so if a uh, if you go to any uh, local rural butcher shop and if a live uh, animal is available you'll immediately find that there is a line uh, next to next to it and that meat gets sold within an hour or two maybe similarly we have some clients who have sh- uh, set up an e-commerce platform in dehradun called as himalayan goat uh, meat.com wherein fresh meat is available twice a day and that meat gets booked uh, well in advance and gets sold uh, within half half an hour to one hour of it coming the time is fixed when it reaches the shop so uh, within a short duration this particular meat uh, gets sold uh, right now since the demand is more and the supply is less i think the prices are more favoring the seller rather than the buyer but once the demand once the uh, goat and uh, sheep production goes up then we will see them entering into the international markets in a much bigger way sir uh, uh, i think uh, uh, with this we are going to conclude webinar for today we uh, we have got very good uh, knowledge and experience sharing from both the speakers today one from uh, Uh, nrc and meet uh, the dedicated institute working on a livestock opportunities we have seen how various business models can be evolved and we have seen successful examples also at the same time we have our own managed incubated startup how they are working in the sector through their uh, technology intervention and helping the small and marginal farmers along with the uh, bigger farmers increasing their income through their application i hope st- uh, the attendees for today as uh, received enough information and there are some very specific questions on business models and uh, the questions related to the training program how they can get trained is there any uh, fee structure involved we are we have shared and we are going to share contact details of the both speakers here today uh, you can write to them to them on uh, your dedicated questions and get them answered so the before uh, we give our uh, concluding remark there are a couple of programs run by manage meant for uh, uh, entrepreneurs at early stage at the same time uh, the people who are running their startups in uh, digital uh, domains so we have a pre incubation training program meant for the people who would like to know what is happening in the sector how they can become uh, early stage entrepreneurs uh, we have just provided the links in the chat and and also and digital marketing training program also we are doing 
additional marketing that is specifically for uh, agri startups how they can acquire a certain type of skills where they can save money and instead of spending a uh, huge amounts of money in digital marketing apart from this very good opportunity for the startups uh, provided by government of india rqi raftar initiatives an initiative where they can get trained and uh, get an opportunity get funded up to 5 lakhs if they are at idea stage up to 25 lakhs they are at a revenue generating stage the our cohort eight applications are open so as uh, you can apply there so you can contact our team if you need any further clarification on the same would like to thank uh, our uh, director general manager and director of agriculture extension and uh, center ceo dr sharanan raj uh, for giving us an opportunity our entire team behind it jenat sinu uh, neha and other people who are working on it so thank you very much for joining us uh, so very soon we are going to uh, touch our 100 webinar so we know many of the people i think with, with your support you have come here any would any of you would like to share your experiences on that uh, that kindly write to us we are also going to write to you based on your uh, and track record of attending our webinars so thank you very much we look, we look forward to your presence in our uh, next webinar have a great day sir we thank both the speakers for taking their time out and their sudden and coming here sir thank you very much have a great day ahead thank, thank you, you dr muthu kumar and uh, dr mr thank anil both of you thank, thank you very much for joining with us very yeah. very interesting thank you sir thank you it's all, it's all because of your help thank you so much sir